This is London. Under the command of General Eisenhower, Allied naval forces, supported by strong air forces, began landing Allied armies this morning on the northern coast of France. You were told it's only two on the beach, the quicker the day. The quicker you got out of there, the better. Doesn't matter who goes down. You keep going. You have got one objective, and that's that slot. Right? And you can see it spitting out. You can see the explosion at the mouth of the machine gun. But you had to get, as they used to say, a pineapple through that slot. If you didn't get there, there was a man coming behind you that did, and there was another man behind him that did if he didn't. And so they got on up the beach. But when you've got up the beach and you're lying down and you felt crushed over it, it was unbelievable. Nobody could ever, ever say they couldn't hear it because most of us were deaf. We, we lost all hearing for days. You see, you fall on the floor and cover your head and the floor came up and hit you in the face. It was uh, something that you'd never want to ever do again. I lost friends, yes. Nobody is sacrosanct. When that shell explodes, when that bomb drops, or when that gun fires, somebody's going to die. And it doesn't matter who you are. If you're in line, it's you. And that's it. You've got just as much chance as the other 20,000 that's there. What can you do? I had a landing craft and it had four jeeps and trailers in it. It had Bangalore torpedoes, machine guns, Lewis guns, everything you could think of in heavy weapons, because that was my speciality. And we were there ready to support any of these units that needed it. He was held about 100 to 150 yards off the beach. It's a thing that you learn by constant practice. He was held, right? The waves pushing her at the back couldn't push her any farther up the beach. She was there. Down went the ramp, out went this chop, this side, out went with a big spiral thing into the sand, into the sand, and a line on there. Meanwhile, all these were offloading as fast as they could. They all had a job to do. The amount of men and materials which went through there uh, within 12 days from the 5th of June uh, to the end of June. It was terrific, formidable. Now, there's already uh, people had been on the beach. They were of what was called uh, the beach master. Now the beach master was gone. What he said had to be done. And he was there with the megaphone, shouting and bawling and explaining to you the quickest way and the fastest way to get off that beach because you're holding people up. They're queued up, waiting to come in. And then in came the assault troops, which were the commandos. And on Sword Beach, it was 45, 41 Royal Marines, plus the South Lancs, East Yorks, North Staffs, uh, who were also Army commandos. And they, uh, came in as well as uh, the Suffolks and that was the fighting force of Sword Beach and their idea was to go in, take out four big gun emplacements 
which was the Merville Battery. Airborne had started uh, to take on, but of course they only had light weapons, Sten guns and rifles. So that's why we had to get there as quick as we could, because we had slightly bigger things like three-inch mortars. And we also had liaison officers, uh, what they call forward bombardment officers from the Navy. They took a six-figure map reference, transferred it to the Navy, and they opened fire. And I'm not joking, their fire was fantastic, spot on, withering, and the Germans were gobsmacked because they didn't know where it was coming from. They said, in the artillery, artillery, and say, the Navy. For instance, there was a big battery which opened fire on our beach called the Battery de Long, which was five big gun emplacements in a line. And there were uh, guns from, I think there were Czechoslovakian guns that the Germans had captured and employed them in these big emplacements. And she opened fire on us. I think it was half past seven. And uh, the Ajax cruiser came rushing in and his first shell went straight through the shield of the gun, right in front of the gun layer. In that, it didn't fire again until night time. When it opened up and he went flying in again, and the Missouri, the biggest ship in the world at that time, American battleship came in and he said, clear off, this is my target. And his next one went through the second gun emplacement, straight into the magazine and blew it clean out the ground. That's what you call shooting. And that's what we had to support us. This is, this is me being talked to by the lieutenant. This is the commando after it had done its first attack and taken its objectives and returned for their second. So it says Roman commandos regrouping after their first attack. Well, if you was to say to anybody there, what did you do it for? What was your aim? And you say to make it safe for these. That's what we did it for, for the kids. To give them a decent life because they had no life. And I wouldn't have missed it for anything then, put it that way. It made a man of me. This is the Veterans Lottery. They are here to support us and we ask you to support them. <laughs>